So welcome to the House uh, Natural Resources Republican Forum on Western Drought. This event is not an official hearing or meeting of the House Committee on Natural Resources. Documents produced to support this forum may not necessarily reflect the views of the committee or its members. However, because committee Democrats neglected to hold a hearing on this important topic until we pressed them, we are meeting today to hear testimony from constituents impacted by the drought and discuss potential solutions. To preserve order and decorum during our forums, we will adhere to the spirit of our committee rules. Please note that members are responsible for their own microphones and members can be muted by staff only to avoid inadvertent background noise. Members or witnesses experiencing technical problems should inform staff immediately. I will now recognize myself for an opening statement. Today's forum is a first step toward bringing the attention of the nation to what is shaping up to be yet another catastrophic year of drought and wildfire. As much as we would like to think the worst is not going to happen, there is no denying the sorry and totally inadequate amount of water in our Western reservoirs, snowpack, stream, and aquifers. So it's no surprise we are today joined by a host of members and witnesses from across the West, each with their growing concern for our communities and our environment. The extent of the drought is exhibited on the map, which should appear soon, with an estimated 70 million people currently impacted. It will likely be, the worst, be, be worse as the summer progresses. So why should people outside the West care about the drought? My constituents and many others represented here today will be impacted as indicated on the map you're now seeing. But why should people outside the West care? For many reasons, such as water for endangered fish, flat water sports, recreational activities, such as boating, fishing, whitewater rafting, waterfowl, loss of aquatic creatures, such as frogs, turtles, and other amphibians, or groundwater for domestic wells or for uh, cities, just to name a few. But of particular concern, let me mention food. We often talk here, particularly during the age of COVID, about supply chain disruptions. We'll get ready. We're on the leading edge of a food supply disaster. For example, we should have another chart that shows the impact on our food supply just from uh, the losses in California. For example, uh, this chart illustrates what irrigated agriculture in California literally brings to our tables. California is the largest domestic producer of fruits, nuts, and vegetables, comprising over 90% of the nation's production of many of these commodities. And we can all thank our water storage and delivery projects for providing the water necessary to make this happen. To state the obvious to most on this call, without water, nothing grows. Without water, American farms and farmers disappear, many to never return. And without water, America will have to rely on food being shipped in from foreign countries, increasing the risk of disruption for any number of reasons. This uh, picture illustrates the last point exactly. In 2014, parts of San Joaquin Valley of California had a drought, the effect of which was to significantly worsen by regulatory action initiated to protect fish. Farm waters who normally were uh, farm workers who normally were working the fields instead had to wait in food lines in what was once one of the most productive agricultural regions in the world. California grows over 90% of our nation's carrots. But the picture, which I don't see yet on our screen, uh, shows and says it all that they had to wait in line for carrots grown in China. This situation was a reality a few years ago and we could find ourselves and our nation in the same sad and dangerous circumstance in just a few short months. Other impacts of drought, our water projects also generate hydropower. When there is less water, we have de de decreased emissions-free electricity. To keep the lights on, more expensive replacement power is necessary and the electricity needed to run air conditioners and the like in the heat of the coming summer will cost more and of course, higher electricity's costs stifle job growth. Less water degrades our forest health, which is already terrible due to decades of chronic and inexcusable federal forest policy and mismanagement. And when forests are incinerated on a grand scale, watersheds are compromised, fish and wildlife pay a steep price, people's lives are shortened, become a smoke inhalation, and our carbon emissions rise dramatically. So causes, drought has plagued the earth since the beginning of time. Previous generations rightly believed that we have the power to reduce or eliminate drought's impact by planning for the future. It's one of the reasons why we have a Bureau of Reclamation, which once built dams and reservoirs and made the West what it is today. But our country has grown complacent, long ago assuming that water would always be abundant. Efforts which should have been made long ago to prepare for increased populations by storing more water and improving watersheds never happened. And then the Endangered Species Act came along. It's a well-intentioned law, but it makes water allocation a zero-sum game with one supposed winner and many, many losers. 
Despite operating to take much, and in some cases all of the water, the Endangered Species Act does not work to recover aquatic species. It definitely needs work. In my district, the Federal Klamath Project, which was homesteaded by World War I and World War II veterans, is subject to three competing endangered fish species regulated by two different agencies. Millions of taxpayer dollars and hundreds of millions of gallons of water have been dedicated to these fish over the last 30 years. And despite this investment, the fish numbers have dwindled, classic dysfunction. As a result, the fish are not doing well and tribal and non-tribal communities are suffering. Solutions, the focus of the day's testimony is to call out the fact that drought is again upon us and we must not repeat the failures of the past that have left us simply unable to defend ourselves. Additionally, we hope to hear ideas and solutions to water shortages. Short-term solutions hopefully will involve funding to help mitigate the drought, but we must clearly do something longer term so our communities can better withstand the next drought. Because sadly, we all know another one or two or three are coming. Cleaning up watersheds on a large scale and increasing the height of existing water storage structures are just a few of the smart common sense things we must consider and hopefully do. This forum will not make it rain, but our goal to, is to educate people on how and what's going on in the West and how all of this will impact America. It will hopefully be a wake up call that the status quo is not acceptable and we must do better. We have a dedicated group of members and witnesses here today willing to roll up their sleeves and to find some solutions. And we look forward to working with all interested parties in doing so. And with that, I now recognize full committee ranking member Westerman for an opening statement before we proceed to testimony. Well, thank you, Ranking Member Bentz, for your leadership on the Water, Oceans, and Wildlife Subcommittee and for all the great work you did in pulling this uh, forum together. Uh, I know the, the staff did a great job as well, and it shows because we've got such a diverse uh, set of witnesses uh, who are impacted by the drought, uh, who want to have their voices heard. And as you mentioned, this will just be a first step in addressing this issue. We've got a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, our American way of life has been directly and positively related to the vision laid out by our Western water engineering forefathers generations ago. They designed and built projects to help end the cycle of dev devastating floods followed by crippling drought. Those projects that captured water in wet times to store it and use it later for dry times worked for decades to create prosperity and food abundance enjoyed nationwide and the emissions-free hydropower these projects generate helped us win World War II and created vibrant economies. And just before Teddy Roosevelt signed the Landmark Reclamation Act of 1902, which actually began the era of proactive federal involvement in Western water infrastructure, uh, the Organic Act of 1897 established the precursor of our national forest. And he quoted, or he, he said this, and I quote, the for the purpose of securing favorable conditions of water flows and to furnish a continuous supply of timber for the use and necessities of the citizens of the United States, unquote. So way back then, Teddy Roosevelt and many others recognized the significance of healthy, vibrant forests uh, to protecting watersheds and providing uh, year-round sources of water. At a time when many of our national uh, forests in the West are on the verge of igniting due to decades of poor management, this drought will only further undermine those commitments and make matters worse. Forest and water are dependent on one another. Healthy forests mean increased water supplies and unhealthy burned out forests lead to water quality and supply problems. The drought will impact wildlife conservation efforts millions of dollars aimed at creating habitat for species like the sage grouse and lesser prairie chicken will dry up if some use of the drought uh, as another re as some use the drought as another reason for listening uh, uh, these species as endangered uh, personally as an engineer and a forester i have to ask myself what got us here when we knew another drought would come a snapshot of the reasons include endless litigation and regulation, a dysfunctional Endangered Species Act, opposition to timber sales, and the lack of new water storage and other infrastructure, which will all be discussed today. It's important to focus on these root causes because we must do our best to help mitigate against the potential uh, and, and hopefully avoid uh, a repeat in the future. 
We were forced to hold this forum because our request to do uh, to the Democratic majority to focus on the drought fell on deaf ears until recently. This forum, however, has fortunately brought all of us together from different states to help find solutions. We'll hear about a number of these short, mid and long term solutions today, and we hope to work with the administration and our Democratic counterparts on these remedies. We have the ability to overcome and avoid droughts, but we must have the political will to act. The American people deserve nothing less. I'm glad to see that uh, Leader McCarthy is on the uh, the forum with us today. I know water is a very important issue to him and to his district in uh, Central California. And I look forward to hearing his comments and I yield back. Thank you, uh, Ranking Member Westerman for those remarks. And we are privileged to be joined by our distinguished Republican leader, Captain McCarthy. I recognize the leader for his opening statement and the introduction of his witness. Hey, Kevin, your speaker's not working. Can you hear me now? All right, can you hear me? Well, I said a lot of great things about you, Bruce, before that, so I don't know if I have to repeat it since no one was able to hear it, but no. Let me start off. Well, thank you, Ranking Member Westerman, and thank you, Ranking Member Benz. Most importantly, thank you for con continuing to fight for this important issue. I know we're not in the majority, but this affects everyone. It, and it doesn't matter what party you are in. This is the food which grows for this nation and for this world. Um, and the drought is one of the most important issues affecting the Western United States. Now, as many of you hail from the West, we know firsthand how droughts affect our communities and our agricultural producers. There's a saying in California that whiskey's for drinking and water's for fighting. Unfortunately, the current situation makes this all the more true in my home state. In California, we are facing the worst drought we've had in more than four decades. It's more than 40 years and we've had some very bad droughts just recently. The water allocation for the state water project is 5%. The Friant Water Authority is at 20%. And the Central Valley project allocation is virtually non-existent. Without this water, the food we grow, and the food that needs for the nation is in jeopardy. And I want everybody to understand, even though a farmer only gets 5%, they pay 100% and getting 5% of the water. That's hard to stay in business and it's been very difficult in the last couple of years. But why are we in this situation? Mother nature has not blessed us with the rain or the snow. While we can't legislate water, we can be better prepared. And that's really a responsibility to all of us as legislators. For years, many of us at this forum have called for action to reevaluate the way we use and store water during the wet years for those in the dry. I know Congressman Bentz up in Oregon has been an expert on this. and has been working diligently about this. And, but the, the real thing for the nation to understand is it's just like the old Aesop fable about the ants and the grasshopper. The ants spent summers preparing uh, for the coming winter, but the grasshopper whistled away at the time, leaving it unprepared and when the summer ended, wasn't prepared for it. In the wet years, we should be able to store water and greater water. There's many ways to do it, right? You could raise dams, be underground storage. We've been trying to do that. But we've spent too much of that water out to the ocean instead of storing it for a situation we know this will not be our last drought. We know it won't, it won't be our last year when we have a real rainy or snowing year. We should pack it away, be the ant and ace off fable, so we're prepared for the years like this when it comes. In 2016, Congress actually enacted the Bipartisan Win Act, which included the first update to California water policy in more than 20 years. Just like Aesop's fable, this law focused on preparing for future droughts through long-term solutions, such as new water storage facilities, and it included regulatory reforms to help the community today. As the Bipartisan Win Act was implemented, it brought about real change to California water policy. This included new updated regulations to make it easier to move water around the state while protecting the environment. We want to protect the environment, but we want the same ability to move the water 
to the greater use of where we're able to go. It also included kickstarting critical water storage projects in California and the West, many of which have been stuck not just for years, but for decades we've been talking about this. And there's always been an environmental lawsuit or something that once we get there, that stops it. Now, Governor Newsom recently declared an emergency for many counties in California because of the drought. But his administration has not, all, has, has not only sued the federal government over the new regulations implemented in 2019, but it also seeking to undo any benefit from them through state regulations. So here we are passing the WIN Act, planning for the future, and we got Governor Newsom trying to stop it on a state level and slow it down and even suing the federal government. And now we're in a drought and he's declaring, <laughs> he's declaring an emergency. Whereas we would have been better prepared um, for the situation we're in today. In addition, many congressional Democrats opposing Shasta Dam, just raising of Shasta Dam. Remember, the greatest return on the investment, if you already have a dam for the greatest return, if you just raise it, it has a great deal more storage. It's already being stored there, but you're storing more for the future and the cost is less. Now, the Democrats have been opposed to this. Now, this would benefit both people and fish in my home state. And they oppose actually extending the WIN Act because the WIN Act had a time frame on it. As we move forward to address the drought, extending the bipartisan WIN Act and advancing our common sense legislation to help California and the West thrive is critical. Now, remember what, how the WIN Act passed. The sponsor of it in the Senate was the Democrat from the state of California. We had David Valadeo working in the House, myself and, and Devin Nunes. You've got both sides of both issues that found common ground, that could put some water storage facilities, protect communities and others, that we found the benefit. It took us more than 25 years of California to finally get there. We need to extend that to make sure we can go further. And as extremist environmentalist groups fight us every step of the way, we must never stop pushing back on them when they attack our farmers on using water. Our farmers are some of the best stewards of our land, and they have implemented some of the most sophisticated water cons conservation techniques in the world. At the end of the day, our communities need water. Congressman Bentz pointed out the San Joaquin Valley is where I represent. 90% of the carrots are grown there. Could you imagine growing the carrots for the nation and everybody else, but because of the drought, you're bringing carrots in from China? That exactly happened in the past. We can't let it happen again. So in Kern County, no one knows this better than Mr. Royce Fast. Royce is a fourth generation local farmer and current chairman of the board of Kern County Water Agency. Now the Kern County Water Agency has been on the forefront of planning always for the future. They're the first ones to be doing water banking. And they don't just help Kern County, they don't just help farmers. They engage and help cities of Los Angeles and others. This is, this is something we work for, for water for all of California. How can we be smarter about it? He is on the front lines and has seen firsthand how regulations and an inaction of years prior have worsened the impacts of the current drought in our state. Now, I look forward to hearing from him today and from other witnesses on this important topic. I want to thank you again, Ranking Member Bentz and Ranking Member Westerman, for allowing me the opportunity to participate in this forum and truthfully for just doing the forum itself. I look forward to working with you and all my colleagues at this forum today on drought-related and Western water legislation. I yield back noise. to you. I will now recognize myself to introduce the Honorable Donnelly Boyd, Klamath County Commissioner. Um, I'd like to recognize him because he is an important voice for drought issues in my district. He fought to get water turned back on during the historic Klamath shutoff of 2001, and he's been one of the strongest advocates for the Klamath Basin long-term water certainty ever since. He's a proud third-generation native of Klamath Basin in Oregon. I'm pleased he's joining us today. And with that, I'd like to introduce Klamath County Commissioner Donnie Boyd for three minutes. Donnie, our commissioner, uh, go ahead. Good morning, uh, Leader McCarthy and Ranking Member Westerman, Ranking Member Subcommittee Bentz and the Natural Resources Committee Republicans. I am Donnie Boyd, Klamath County Commissioner, a lifetime resident of Klamath County. Thank you for this forum today as the topic is vital to our county and my entire Klamath Basin. For 100 years, 150 years, irrigated agriculture has been the primary economic engine in our county. 
there is approximately 200,000 irrigated acres in the area that are tributary to and surrounding the upper Klamath Lake. There are about 140,000 acres in Klamath County that are served by the Bureau of Reclamation's Klamath Project, which was authorized in 1905. Today, that economy is shut down. Surface water irrigation is shut down. Family farms, farm employees, businesses that serve agriculture, Main Street, Klamath, Klamath, Main Streets in the Klamath County and in rural communities are all at risk and terrified, no doubt of their own fault. Natural wild ref, or National wildlife refuges that rely on the same water delivery system as agriculture have no water. This year is the worst or close to the worst drought year in memory. With that said, irrigation will receive essential no water there is in the Klamath project. For example, irrigation wildlife refuges combined with will use less than 10% of the water that flows into Klamath Lake, the project's storage reservoir. We have concerns of how and why this has come about. Water has been used for irrigation in the past, but has been reallocated to in-stream use. Those in-stream uses are very important, but there is no evidence that to complete drying up of agriculture is doing the fish any good. That issue is for another time though. Today, I want to know, I want you to know that on my, May 7th, the Klamath County Board of Commissioners and the Siskiyou and Modoc County Board of Supervisors from California held a joint meeting. To everyone's knowledge, this is the first time ever these three counties which share irrigation water that come out of the Klamath project met together. These three boards unanimously approved a letter to our congressional delegation, which I have attached to this testimony. The boards identified the immediate need for financial resources to try to limit the damage to the extent it can be limited. The sooner we can get that help, the more it will do to lessen the extreme and the disaster will be less. There is one update to this letter though. The irrigation water supply will be even less than we thought. The A Canal, which conveyed irrigation water for 150,000 acres since 1907, has been closed and will be closed for the remainder of the year. The A Canal also provides recharge for the domestic wells that rely on drinking and, water and sanitation within the area. There are 1,800 of these domestic wells in the area that will be influenced by the water shutoff. We have no ideas what's going to happen to or exactly how many will go dry. Please take into con careful consideration the negative impact these decisions have created in the Klamath Basin community, Speci specifically affecting ag, local business, and residential domestic wells. These three county letter states this, there is a need for at least 45 million. The actual impact will be far greater than that. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. And uh, we're thinking that we're down to just uh, just me as the last person to ask a question, and I'm hoping that my witness, uh, Commissioner Boyd, is available. Um, uh, Commissioner, if you are, here's my question to you. Um, as you know, the 2001 water shutoff on the Klamath Project was disastrous for your county. Uh, its residents and, and most people there. A National Academy of Science report later found that the water regime used during that shutoff was not scientifically justified. Even with more water and more money over the last 20 years, the sucker species in the Upper Klamath Lake and the migrating coho salmon downstream populations have not improved. And clearly the situation for irrigators and the tribes have not improved either. So what can be done differently uh, over the next 20 years to avoid the, the same outcome? Well, there's the saying goes that if you keep doing the same nonsense, you get the same nonsensical uh, results. And that's what's happening. We've been raising lake levels for 20 years. The National Academy of Science said that we didn't need to do that. We've been releasing more water down the river for the last 20 years. It's a National Academy of Sciences theory 
that we should be reducing water flows, take it more back to mother nature. It was before the dams were built. And so the streams would actually, the Klamath River would not totally dry up, but the banks would dry up and let the sea sh Shasta, which is a parasite that lives in the river that's affecting the salmon, dry up and blow away instead of the theory they've been using that's been trying to wash it down the river. We need to change the way we manage the water in the Klamath Basin. Commissioner, thank you for that. And, um, and I wanna thank uh, every, everyone uh, for joining us today. This has been an absolutely superb hearing. And I think the number of people interested illustrates the incredible challenge that faces all of us. And uh, I, I also, uh, your voices of course are necessary uh, to raise the level of understanding of the people across the nation. I think we've done that today and we'll have another chance next week in a, in a um, full uh, subcommittee hearing. So. With all of that, uh, look forward to finding lasting solutions with you and uh, look forward to forging a path forward out of, out of this uh, incredibly difficult situation. So with that, this Thanks. meeting is adjourned.